Hi everyone, um, thank you for joining us. I'm Victoria Patlajan, I'm from uh, Project Place, and I've been a Techos Home Trainer for the last so almost two years now. Um, so we have a partnership um, with Techos Home. Um, many of you might be familiar, but Techos Home helps communities around the Boston area to get um, access to technology, um, also teach digital literacy to um, many people who might not have those skills. Um, in my current role at Project Place, I'm the Director of Education. So we, um, Project Place, work specifically with um, homeless individuals of Boston and those who are newer in recovery um, to get them digital skills and also learn employment habits, such as like what we're learning today about cover letters. Um, so um, this is actually kind of a lesson, some of the stuff that is um, very relevant to what I teach. Um, and at the end, I'll talk a little bit more about Project Place as well, if you are interested. Um, but I just want to thank you guys all for coming. Um, you guys are all muted, um, and there's a subtitle in the chat. There is a subtitles link um, if you need subtitles, and we will get started. All right, so today I'm going to do a quick overview of Zoom if you've never um, used Zoom before. Um, and then we will. The first half of our um, time will be spent more so on the content of cover letters, like what do you actually write and what are some tips to writing it. And then the second half will actually be then putting it and putting it on Google Docs and getting some pointers. Um, some of you may have written a cover letter before, but never on Google Docs. Maybe you've never written a cover letter. Um, so wherever you kind of are, I hope to kind of teach you something new if you are kind of an advanced cover letter writer um, or maybe you've never ran a cover letter before um, that's totally fine and um, hopefully I will be able to kind of guide you and um, with our resources to help you start getting um, your way there um, especially during COVID-19. And at the end we will have a Q&A um, so if you have any specific questions that you want to ask me um, about cover letters. All right. Um, just to go over some basic Zoom. Um, so at the top right, um, you will see um, others in the gallery view. I like to say it almost looks like a, a little waffle. Um, I use the term waffle a lot, but it has, um, it's like a six by six square. No, three by three square. Um, and um, you will be muted, but if you need a question, you can press um, uh, the little microphone button right up here and it will go ahead and unmute yourself. So if you have a question, you can also use the chat um, to answer any questions. Nessie, um, she works at Tech Goes Home, she's waving. Um, she will be answering any questions um, through the chat or she might just interrupt me um, and that's totally fine to, if there's an important question that everyone might need to know. And also check for uh, the chat um, for any other information. Um, and at the end, um, Nessie will be, um, sending out this slide deck and um, also um, all these resources that I'm gonna be showing you. Um, and so you're gonna be free to use these in um, your employment, um, learn to get employed as you go forward. All right, so I'm actually gonna have us all practice using the chat um, for this icebreaker. So in the chat, write anything that you know about cover letters. And you just can write a sentence, like one thing or something that you know. And if you don't know anything about cover letters or you've never either heard of it or written one, you can write that. And Nessie will actually kind of tell me what people say. Okay guys, don't be quiet. There's a lot of you, so I wanna see some answers in the chat. Somebody said, don't make them too long. Super important, yeah, we're gonna talk about it. Actually, a lot of people think like, longer is better because that means I have more words. Like, no one's gonna read anything more than a page. Very good. Wow, somebody said they've never written one. Someone else said, be specific. Yep. Cover letters and introduction to who you are. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, two people basically said that. So lots of good stuff coming in. 
Nice. Oh, uh, hello. Yeah. Hi, Justin. Hi, uh, this is Justin. Um, I'm trying to, um, I don't think I have the keyboard on my iPad. I don't know how to use it. Um, do I um, just go down on the, the bottom screen? Hmm. Good question. Um, there's usually, um, I have an Android, but usually towards the bottom, there might be like three little dots for like more or something like that. Um, if you can find it, great. I would just try your buttons. If you can, if you have a good question, just unmute yourself and ask. That's okay. okay. Yeah. That's totally fine too. Yeah, I was just trying to type onto the uh, icebreaker screen and try to type in the answer. Yeah, well, Justin, what was your um, thing that you know about cover letters? Um, basically, just um, it's basically a way for employers, employers that you are trying to apply for a job to know, let them know about your um, experience in the workforce. Uh, I haven't had a lot of experience in the um, in doing cover letters. I think I've only done I've been trained one time in cover letters when I did a training program after I graduated from uh, college a few years ago. Mm -hmm. So, so, but basically, I think that's what it is. Just mainly trying to convince employers of why you're qualified for that certain position and just basically um, give them your background and your work experience. Absolutely. Yeah, you kind of, um, it seems like you, you're definitely on the right track to talking about like the specific job and why you'd be, um, why it'd be important. Nessie, is there anything else from the chat that yeah, there's a couple other things. So um, somebody else also said uh, you should talk about why you want the job. Make sure you check your spelling. Um, it's important. Uh, it's a very important part of the interview process because um, you're trying to make a good impression. Uh, a couple of people said they've never been in cover letters before. Some people have but don't have as much experience in Google Docs. Um, should be brief and speak to the essentials about yourself. Oh, I like that. Brief and the essentials. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. So it seems like most of us have some experience, but some don't, and that's totally okay. Um, so we'll, we'll get started on just some basic of why I use the cover letter. Um, so in my, I teach a class called Work Ready. I often get um, questions of like, well, I've gotten jobs before and I haven't written a cover letter. So what's up with that? And yeah, maybe that probably happened um and um however it does make you stand out in a crap from a crowd of applicants and if you're currently unemployed or you're looking for a job um especially right now um as you know the unemployment rate is a lot higher than it used to be um so it's kind of what we call a employer's market meaning that people a lot of people are applying for the same job and with that means is that it's going to be more competitive. So you have to um, really stand out from the crowd of applicants. It's also a chance to introduce why you specifically want a job at that company. I know, um, so it is individualized. It's not like a resume. A resume, you would send the same resume to um, almost every job you apply for. Maybe you want, a, maybe you're interested in two different industries, so you have two different resumes to kind of reflect at that. But in a cover letter, they are all each different. Um, it also helps you stand out that there are a little bit, because they take a little bit more time, less people do it. So you're much more likely to stand out. And I then I did some research to figure out like, what, what did the numbers say? And it says 56% of recruiters says they would, um, they would only hire someone if they had a cover letter attached. I know I do the hiring app here at Project Place um, for the education department. And while it makes sense for my job, they need to have cover letters. I don't even look at someone's application or resume if they don't attach a cover letter. Um, and I do look at their cover letter. So I can speak from personal experience that they are very important. Even if it doesn't say attach a cover letter or it's optional, you should add, add, nowadays you definitely wanna put a cover letter in. But if that seems really overwhelming to you, I'm here to help you kind of figuring out the how. So I want to start off with some do's and don'ts. Um, and again, if you have any questions about what I'm saying, feel free to put it in the chat or um, you can um, unmute yourself and ask. But what first do is do always write a cover letter. Do uh, Second do is do highlight specific accompl accomplishments related to the job you are applying for. Um, so it does have to be individualized to a certain extent. Um, I'm gonna talk about ways to work smarter, not harder, um, a little bit later of how you can kind of like have similar cover letters for similar job titles, but because if you if you are applying for 
to three different companies, but all for maybe a, um, administrative assistance. Your cover letter is probably going to be the same for all three of those, but you still want to be able to reflect back to the job and the job requirements. Do address the cover letter to a named individual, um, say Mr., Miss, Mrs., um, um, or if you don't know, um, write to whom it may concern. Sometimes it does say um, in the job requirements, like um, the posting. So be very careful to read the whole entire posting because it often does say a named individual. But if you don't know, that's okay. Just write to whom it may concern. Um, do tell your employer how you can meet your, their needs and contribute to their company. Do avoid negativity. Um, I think it kind of sounds obvious when you say it, but I've seen a lot of my students sometimes write like, well, I don't have a lot of experience in this but um so try actually avoid that i mean it's okay not to actually have a lot of experience in a certain field i always say like even if it's volunteer experience even if it's something transferable so maybe you've never been an office assistant before but you've taken um a, a class about like typing class or computer skills class maybe you have your customer service certification you still have transferable skills or maybe if it's customer service related to administrative skills so you know, um, often your things are transferable, so you don't actually have to highlight the fact that maybe you don't have experience with it. Um, some people, if you do have gaps in employment, um, and um, know that many people will have gaps in employment right now um, due to COVID, um, but you don't have to share that in the cover letter or specifically talk about it. Um, you think you might want to prepare during the interview process to prepare for that question, like why do you have a gap, um, but that's a little bit later. Do eliminate all unnecessary words. That is huge. Um, again, a lot of people think that the more they write, the better it is, but oftentimes it actually deters from actually what. It's much better to be concise. And I'm actually gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to be more concise in your writing um, to actually get straight to the point and make sure you don't go over that one page. And of course, do proofread for mistakes. That's a huge one. And maybe I have a friend, um, a teacher, someone that you know and trust, um, also look over your stuff because proof mistakes do happen. Um, you just don't want it on your cover letter. All right, and some don'ts. Um, don't write more than a page, that's huge. Um, don't just rehash your resume. Like you don't have to, they will already have your resume in front of you. You don't necessarily have to rewrite everything. Um, don't ever send a generic cover letter that is not tailored to the specific employer. So again, I'm gonna talk about um, working smarter, not harder. Um, you don't, you wanna specifically name the um, company that you're applying for with the name and the position. You don't just wanna say, I'm interested in your position because this, because that's gonna come off as um, really generic. And um, actually I'm teaching an Indeed, um, webinar next week, but it's actually really easy if you're applying for Indeed to like just copy cover letters without uh, specifying it and don't do it. Take the extra five minutes to switch out names and company names um, and proofread and make sure you don't miss everything so it's more specific and tailored to that specific employer. Um, and don't leave errors, of course, just reread it. Um, don't do the awkward thing where you are applying for a job to Macy's, but you accidentally said, I'm really excited to apply to Target. Like, don't do that. <laughs> it's happened before. Just, um, just make sure you proofread it to make sure you don't make that um, silly mistake. All right. All right. Quick little pop quiz. Um, so you're going to put your answers in the chat. So you can put it all in one line. So quick true or false. Number one, a cover letter should be no more than one page, true or false. Number two, you can use the same cover letter for every job you apply for, true or false. And three, if a, even if a job doesn't require it, you should still send a cover letter, true or false. So just put it all on the same line. It's a little confusing because they're not numbered, but just one, two, and three. And Nessie, if you wanna tell me how they're doing. Uh, they're doing great. I got a lot of uh, true, false, true, yes, no, yes. Yes, no, yes. So a cover letter should be no more than one page. True. Um, you can use the same cover letter for every job you apply for. False. But you can be like, 
strategic about the um, what you're doing. Um, but you definitely, again, check for those names, switch out names, switch out position names. And last, even if a job requires it, you, sh you um, doesn't require it, you should still send a cover letter. Absolutely true. You will actually stick out way more if you take the time. It's even better if they don't say they require it and you do it anyways, they're going to be super impressed. Um, especially, especially maybe you don't meet like all the requirements of the job. People are often see like, oh my gosh, but it requires a GED. I don't have my GED. Should I even apply for it? Sure. Put a cover letter, don't mention the fact that you have a GED, and then um, see where it takes you. They're going to actually be more impressed with you um, that you added a cover letter. So um, it really does make you stick out a little bit more. All right. So a lot of you, I'm sure, are like, okay, but like, I need a visual, like, just see it. Um, so I'm just going to go over, I do have, I don't want to call it a model cover letter, because I think everything can always be better, but this is an example one. Um, so I'm just going to have us take a look at this. And I'm just going to point out a few things. So here I have it on Google Docs, and I'll go again over more specifically of things to um, point out a little bit later. But I just wanted to show you some. Now, I always say, like, Times New Roman 12-point font is usually the way to go. I've seen some cover letters. They add some a little decorative, like, border. Um, if you want to do that, that's OK. Don't go overboard. It's always better to, like, do it plain, but do it well, than to go overboard and like someone be like, ooh, that's kind of weird. Like, or also don't use bright pink font. So just be, just be aware of what you're sending and how you're showing it. Um, but I just want to kind of point out, so it starts off with this is the applicant's information. One thing though, if you're living in, a, like if you're living maybe in a shelter or you don't have like, or a treatment center, maybe you don't have like a, your, address isn't some a place that you're going to be seeing you for long, you can absolutely leave off the street address. You don't have to put it. Um, so feel free to do that. Um, then I have written out the date. This is the more formal way to write it out. And it's then it's their information. Here I do have, I, I will say that George example um, from Planet Fit Fitness. Um, and I, I have his information, so I'm able to do it. But again, if I didn't have this, I could always delete this and um, just say plan Planet Fitness. Um, and then I have Dear Mr. Example. And you can see here, it's not more than one page, and everything is left aligned. Um, one actually like common misconception, I think, you know, when we like went to school, um, when we were younger, um, teachers told us to always indent. Interestingly enough, I actually didn't know this, you actually don't need to indent for a letter, so you don't have to indent here. Um, so, and these spaces, you're just pre pressing enter. Again, I'm going to go more into the specifics, but I'm just going to read aloud this um, cover letter. So, I'm Ryan for the personal trainer position at your Planet Fitness Boston location. I learned of this position from your front desk associate, Sandy McMell. I made up that name. I believe my combination of job experience and my developed skills will make me a great fit to join your dedicated wellness team. I have over, and then I, so it's short, it's like a quick little introduction. This is what I call the introductory paragraph. Now the second paragraph is kind of like the bulk of your experience. Um, I have over three years of per personal training experience at LA Fitness, where I develop my, um, my client-oriented approach and exceptional track rec record of client satisfaction. At LA Fitness, I let him facilitate small private gym classes of 10 to 14 clients. And your opportunity to further uh, teach classes at Planet Fitness is an exciting prospect. Furthermore, so I specifically talk about something that they reference in the this made-up job description too. Like, oh, it said you want to, someone who um, teaches more classes. I have that experience. Furthermore, I provide beneficial advice and individualized recommendations on dietary habits of more than 20 clients per week. In January of 2019, I earned the personal trainer of the year at the new inn location due to my commitment to excellence in approaching personal training with understanding and individualized click. My valuable experience has provided me with great opportunity to learn with people of various backgrounds and tailor my approach to fit the needs of each client. Moreover, I am a results-oriented individual with extensive knowledge of nutrition and anatomy principles. I re recently renewed my ICSM certified personal trainer certificate. I would appreciate the opportunity to speak with you more about this position in more detail as I believe 
I would be a great addition to the plant fitness team. Thank you for your consideration and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Best Marie A applicant. Um, and so you can see this is kind of like a wrap up. I just add like some more like specific um, things like the fact that I just got my personal trainer um, certificate, that's not true, um, is a good addition and kind of says like, I'm excited to speak with you more about the position um, and kind of just wrap it up and tailor it. Um, so again, I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail about some of the tricks, but this is just an example. And you'll have access to the example at any time. And I'm giving you guys all my permission. If you see like a sentence you like, or like, oh, I really like it when you say this, feel free to use it. Cover letters are often just kind of like saying like, I would be a great addition to the, the blank team. Feel free to use um, this um, for some guidance as well. All right, so that's just like the basics of this is just an example, um, just so you guys can have like a framework. All right. Hey, Victoria, I got a really good question. Um, yeah. I was interested in your um, response. So somebody asked, um, you said it should be a page. So somebody asked, could it be less than a page? So what do you think are, is like the minimum size that it should be? That's a great question. Um, I would say, um, Actually, in my example of like a more beginner example, I have it um, about three sentences for the introductory paragraph, um, three sentences um, in the body and three sentences in the conclusion. Um, and I kind of break it down. Um, so I would say that I think you could probably, um, and also depending on the job that um, you're applying for or the um, job that based on the, your experience, um, Maybe if you don't have as much experience, you might have less to put in. Um, you could probably make it half the size of that. This was a kind of a bulky one, like that was right at one page. I probably couldn't have gone much longer on anything. Um, so I would say you could probably cut that down by half. Um, if you, um, I don't necessarily think like, it's a bad thing to be shorter. Um, we've like, they've also done studies that is kind of interesting that unfortunately a prospector employer will only look at your application, that means resume and cover letter, um, for only 30 seconds. So that's like not a lot of time to even read through things. So you just want, you wanna make sure more that the words you're saying are powerful um, rather than like bulky because, and that's totally fine. All right, all right, so number one. So I have three tips to start about, like talk about with um, and relate to the, content of cover letter writing. And the tip number one is use action and strong verbs. Um, so use action verbs to make your writing more concise, concise. So instead of writing, I was in charge of a team of 10 employers. I'm sorry, employees. So that's, you know, nine words. Um, you could say, I managed a team of 10 employees. And this word managed counts as a strong verb. Um, here, and if you remember kind of like, this is, might be like thinking back to like old school, like this is actually kind of like more of a passive voice. If you say an app, use an active voice and say, I manage or I facilitated, um, it actually diversifies your words. I've also noticed a lot from my students that they often use, overuse the word work. I worked on this. I worked on that. Um. And then it makes you seem, uh, it, it makes your writing less strong. And so you wanna show your best foot forward. So I actually found this really cool um, website that actually has um, these action verbs that you can take straight from. And they're, they're really strong. So negotiated, measured, um, addressed, um, engineered. So these are all words and they're kind of in buckets. So like if you want to look at leadership words because you knew you let, um, let a team, you, could, you can use some of these words. Moderated, monitored, authorized. So I think those are better words that will make your writing more stronger. Um, and they're actually, you will actually use less words when you're writing them. So um, just, be, like, just being aware, um, like rather than saying I worked really hard, you're just describing your work. Like you could um, say, I arranged, I indexed. Like, so it is more specific as well. So 
a super great resource just to add. If you find yourself using weak kind of words, if you're using the word worked um, and like kind of like not, um, or like you're saying I am or I was, um, you can definitely take from there. All right. Number two, um, and this is kind of like such a, um, like something that people always forget is like using transition words. So transition words, they help the reader, very much your possible your future employer, easily progress, like change from one idea from another. So if you saw my example, I use the word moreover, I use the word furthermore. Um, I don't think I use additionally, but these are words that say, Again, like if you're just writing I worked or even I assembled, if you start every sentence with the word I, you almost, I say like it's robot speak, you're like, I did, I did that. So you like, if you add though transition words, it actually makes your writing more complex. So I actually then have here is like some examples. So say for example, um, so the, like it's in little characters, so amplification, that means to add on something. You could say in addition, further, moreover. I love the word moreover. It sounds very fancy. Um, and then like if you want to give an example, you could say just for example, for instance, to illustrate. These are all just ways to introduce a new idea. So again, if you want to give more examples, you might say, um, for instance, this. Um, it's just a really easy way to make your writing more complex and write, make your writing better. All right. And the third um, tip, and this is kind of my last tip before I'm going to kind of go over um, the like, details of going to Google Docs, is use a blend of hard and soft skills. I'm not going to lie to you. I went Before I started my work at Project List, I had no idea what the difference between a hard skill and a soft skill is. But I, once I learned, I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. Okay, so a hard skill is this, and I actually remember it like hard, like you can, means tangible or objective. So it's like something that you do or something that you can prove, maybe you have a certificate with. So I earned my search safe certificate. That, that is something, no matter who you ask, if you have a surf safe to, no one can argue with that, the fact that you have that. Or I managed a team of 10 people. If that, like, that's a true statement, no one can argue with that. Like, that is the truth. Now, your soft skills are a little bit different. Soft skills are traits, and the, the opposite of objective is subjective. Um, so that means that they can be argued. And they're harder to prove, right? So someone could say like, I'm really reliable. I am very, I'm very conscientious. I'm such a hard worker. So that's great. But one thing, and I've noticed this in a few of my students, but not the right cover letter, they will laundry list what I call like all these deep personality traits. And they might all be true, right? They, can, they might say like, I'm great with time management. Um, I love people and I, like they just keep on going with traits, but never give an example. And that will actually weaken what you're saying and might sound almost um, not genuine. So if you say a soft skill, like say like I am a team player, you always should give evidence. Often you'll give evidence with a hard skill to back it up. Um, I think back prior to my time at, um, at Project Place, I was actually um, a special ed English teacher for high schoolers, so I'd be, be like, one of those teachers being like, where's your evidence? Give me the textual evidence, but this is so important to do. Um, so for example, instead of just saying, I'm a team player and walking away, like, and not giving any evidence, give me an example, like, I am a team player. For instance, you can use one of those transition words. Um, I facilitated a weekly meeting um, to, communicate ideas um, between different departments. Just one example, you don't need to give me a whole paragraph, make sure you have an example. But one ex um, interesting thing I found online is that what is more important when you're doing cover letters and red resumes and to show? It said right now, so it, employers, what they're looking for, they're looking for both, most people are looking for both hard and soft skills. They're both important, right? Because it makes sense. 
you would want someone maybe like that actually that has experience um, or maybe a specific certificate, um, say if it was like serve safe, like maybe they, they are a prep cook, maybe you do need serve safe. So that's a hard skill, but you also need someone who's a team player. So you want to make sure you actually have a balance of that and showing that in your cover letter. And this is actually something different about a resume. Resumes are often hard skills based. They're often very concrete. But a cover letter, you get to kind of show your personality more. So don't be afraid to talk about um, a personality trait that you think is really important. Maybe you're really innovative. You Maybe you're really great um, at bringing new ideas. So give it, like, give, talk about your, um, like, innovation and, like, how you were able to do that at your past job and give an example. I think for time's sake, I don't, um, I don't think we'll have time to brainstorm like hard and soft skills. However, um, at the end, if someone is confused about it, definitely we'll, we can come back to that because it definitely is something that keeps, um, is an, like a common denominator, the difference between a, um, a good cover letter and not so good cover letter is the lack of balance. But I do wanna give a little bit more examples. So hard skill examples. I trained 32 employees on difficult conversation best practices. It's very specific. Also, just a little side note, a um, little tip, I should probably should have added this in, is that adding numbers into your writing, both in a resume and a cover letter, um, is really, really helpful because it helps um, the employers like, learn this, like how difficult this was. So if you were trained only two employee, employees, that's different than 32. So those are kind of different metrics. And another hard school would be, I earned my Microsoft Certified Educator Certificate. Again, that's something no one can take away from, right? You either did it or you didn't. Soft skill. So I, here I have, I developed, ooh, look, there's a, um, a strong verb for you. My excellent communication skills by um, facilitating weekly staff me meetings to ensure understanding of new protocols in um, professional development, right? So we didn't just say, I have excellent communication skills and walk away. You want to make sure you give evidence to it. All right, I do wanna just go over um, a quick um, mistake cover letter. And here we have a little bit of a weak cover letter, but I actually um, used it. So I point out like some of the things I often see wrong, like with cover letters from my students. So a few things to just even like looking at this, you can see that there's no heading. Typically, when you're emailing a cover letter, it does have to have a heading. So you want to be very, very aware of that um, and make it much more professional like a letter. So you want to just say, and it says, Dear Frank, you should use last name, Dear Mr. Smith, whoever that is. Um, some other issues as this is not Times New Roman 12 point font and something else. It's not distracting, so you probably would get away with it, but I think it's always um, helpful to just go go the old school Times New Roman 12 point font. And I will, just as a little reminder, if you haven't, if it's been a while or you haven't used Google Docs, you could change this to Times New Roman in 12 point font. And that's how you would start writing that way. And I'm actually gonna change this to Times New Roman 12 point font. Nope, I didn't actually, I didn't actually do that because I unhighlighted it. <laughs> All right, third time's a charm. All right. So here it's, it talks about, I'm writing to apply for the front desk um, attendant position at McCloskey Incorporated. One thing is actually position names you do want to capitalize because it's a position name. So it's a proper noun. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, I learned if your position through Indeed, that's completely okay to say that. The prior, prior um, example had a specific, if you know someone who works there, that's always a plus. But if you just found it through Indeed, that's totally okay to write it through Indeed. And I believe my skills and experience would be a great match for your company. That's actually fine. I have over 10 years experience working at the front desk. Um. I think that's a little bit weak. You could probably talk about like um, working in a customer service industry or, um, I mean, cause that's a lot of time. I'm reliable, hardworking and dependable. Oh, that's like one of the, those laundry list things, right? You, it was all soft skills and didn't give me an example of it. 
So honestly, it doesn't seem very genuine and very honest if you just say those things and kind of like walk away. So I, if I were them, I would say, first of all, also other hint is the word reliable and dependent, they're the same words. So that's also a concise issue. Like if you're just saying the same thing twice, you're actually wasting space, right? Um, so I would, I would say maybe stick with hardworking. I don't even think that's that strong of a personality trait. Um, but if you were going to use hardworking, you could all, uh, the, you need to make sure you have uh, an example to follow through. <laughs> this says, I worked at fi fiance and company for eight years. Maybe that's true, but I think that they miswrote the word finance. Um, so that's something to look out for. Um, and this is where kind of not rehashing your resume comes into play. They probably know that you work there because you, they see their resume. So you don't, this again is kind of just a weak sentence. This is, this is an opportunity to talk about your skills. Like tell me what you learned at, um, finance or fiance and company, not sure. Um, no, don't just rehash your resume. I also communicate well. Okay. Again, not super um, descriptive, doesn't give me any examples. I'm the fastest typer at my agency. I'm, um, I would say that that is just, that might be a beneficial thing. Maybe you wanna say like, if they, um, attendance spelled wrong, so it's gonna bother me. Um, if they, that is something that this, um, a fast typing speed is actually what they are looking for. Um, maybe you wanna um, talk about your specific words for a minute. Um, that might be more beneficial than just saying I'm the fastest typer at my agency. That's just kind of comes across as like an odd thing. Um, I can also work simultaneously on many tasks and multitask. So here we have, again, like more soft skills and like, um, working simultaneously on many tasks and my tasks, like you're also just saying the same thing multiple times and it's not very concise. Thank you for your consideration. I believe I make a great fit for McNulty and company. Oops, this person forgot to edit. This is McCloskey. They wrote McNulty. Uh, that's embarrassing. So make sure do not do that <laughs> is a really common ish, um, mistake, especially if you are copy and pasting. And I would be um, excited to learn more about the company. Yours truly, Sam Doe. One thing is, and I mentioned it before, make sure you left aligned everything. Um, it, make, it just makes for a, a cleaner appearance, um, makes it look aligned. Um, but yeah, so those are just some similar, like often mistakes that I see when I'm looking at cover letters. All right. All right, so best practices for cover letter writing with Google Docs. So um, the first thing I wanna talk about is create a folder with Google Docs to keep track of all the letters that you have written. So if you are on your drive, you actually always want to, um, I actually don't have one, but I can create one. You always wanna have, um, keep your cover letters, even ones that you've written like a while back, keep them all in the same place because you might be applying for a similar job and you can actually use that um, information. So to, if I just navigate to drive.google.com and I cre um, hit this rainbow plus sign, which says new, and I say folder. Actually, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. Cancel. Want to be a folder, folder. Oh, new folder has right in front of me. And I said cover letter. Now a cover letter folder just arrived and I can actually just, it says drop, you can drop your files in there. Um, this will actually keep you organized. I know you just saw my drive. My, my drive is often a little bit of a mess. I'm not super organized with it. But one thing that I can't remember is that cover letters are really important to have. So, um, so that is just one thing to kind of um, organize. You can also organize your resume that way. So again, Google Drive and just say new folder, or actually for me, it just said folder, and you can add it, something that says cover letters. All right, second thing that I wanna talk about is naming your cover letter. Very often you'll actually be sending a cover letter. 
um, via like email or, um, and you want to make sure the name is professional or maybe you're uploading it um, to a, maybe there's an applicant portal. You want to make sure you um, are professional. D don't just say, this is my cover letter, like in all caps or cover letter. Um, be specific. Sometimes they do um, in the job description, they um, the job actually wants you to save it as a specific first and last name, cover letter specifically. Um, so look out for that. But a way to, I'm going to actually open up this example cover letter, a good way to name your cover letter. So say you had Google Docs open right here. Um, so how to name your document is all the way up there. Oh, and I just go back. All right. So here it says M applicant. That's their first and last name. But if I, if this was mine, I'd say V Pat Lejean. And then I say Planet Fitness cover letter. You, again, you can kind of work with it, but I would definitely rec recommend your first initial last name, where you're applying for, and your cover letter. That will also help you when you're um, dragging it into your um, folder on Google Drive. That will actually really help you um, be able to say like, oh, I will um, want to look at this old cover letter. And you can actually see the Planet Fitness one right in the title. So it's a lot easier for you to put. All right. Yeah. All right, this is my favorite um, thing to teach about um, because um, it, it becomes really, really helpful. Um, because I think the idea of writing a original cover letter to every single employer is really overwhelming. And so to that, I say don't be overwhelmed. So I'm gonna show you how, an example of how to work, again, smarter, not harder. So I wrote my Planet Fitness cover letter. It's pretty good. I feel comfortable writing it. But you know what? I was just on Indeed, or I was just on looking for jobs, and I saw that um, Be Beacon Hill Fitness Club, I don't know if that's their name, something like that, Be we'll, we'll call it that, Beacon Hill Fitness Club is also looking for a personal trainer. And I already had this great cover letter. It's about personal training. I don't want to have to retype everything um, just because it's a different place. A lot of what I'm saying is exactly the same. So how to make a copy of this and then make changes after is to do the following. So here's my cover letter. You go ahead and go to file. And I love this. And I just say make a copy. And it says now copy document. I'm actually gonna name this. I'm gonna name this first so I don't get confused. <laughs> um, some people get like confused if they make a copy and then they're like, oh my God, I have so many copies of the same thing. So I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna do the same way. Um, Beacon the Fitness Club cover letter. It's gonna have the same name. And I just press enter. And now I have this new cover. I'm going to X out. I've done this, um, made this mistake too many times. I've edited the wrong cover letter on the wrong thing. Don't worry, it happens, but I'm gonna actually X out of this old one. So this is my plant fitness. I'm gonna X out. Now I'm working only on my new Beacon Hill Fitness Club. And it's just um, auto put everything in. Now, this is where proofreading is so, so important. It makes, um, read through it. If you're gonna do it this way, read through it and take your time with it. So to start off, this all looks fine. This is my information. I haven't moved. Um, Marie applicant hasn't moved. Oh, the date's a little off. So today's actually the 20th. So I, I would want to change that. And I would go line by line. So this person's name is actually Sarah example. No, I'm going to say it's Sarah, Sarah, Sarah letter. <laughs> and then I want to now edit. I'm just gonna do edits on Beacon Hill Fitness Club. And I'm gonna say that's at 111 Spring Street. And it has a different zip code. 
right? So I'm just editing what I see and I'm going line by line so I don't miss anything. All right, now dear Mr. Example, this would be an easy thing for me to mess up. So I'm gonna look at dear Sarah letter. I'm gonna go dear Miss letter. And then you want to go through and be very, very careful that you're not messing up the words. So you would say, I'm ready to apply for the personal trainer. I'm going to look back at my um, job description, say I had it on a D and it's still a personal trainer. So I'm going to keep that the same at your Planet Fit Fitness Boston location. I'm going to just say, say Beacon Hill Fitness Club is, is local to Boston. So I wouldn't say, um, like Boston location because I don't need that because it's going to be around here. Um, and I learned of this position from your front um, front desk associate, Sandy McMill. That's not true anymore. So now I said from Indeed. I believe my combination of job experience and my developed skills would make me a great fit to join your dedicated wellness team. That sounds about the same. Like I don't need to necessarily change that. Um, and then I'm going to read through this. Blah, 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 I list through. Oh, I mentioned Planet Fitness on this. And you know what, actually, on in this regard, it actually doesn't um, talk about leading classes. So I actually might just make this a little bit shorter. They don't necessarily have that. So I'm actually not gonna mention that because I, I, that's not really specific. But at my requirement, I do see that they are looking for someone who, um, who is trained in CrossFit. I've taught CrossFit before. So at LA Fitness, I also taught CrossFit. And I would, I guess I didn't be excited to explore. Um, that opportunity at Beacon Hill Fitness Club. Or I could have just deleted it. It depends on if there was something kind of um, like specific about the job requirements that kind of stuck out to you, to me. Oh, and I love just what I'm pointing out right now, those red squigglies, that means something's wrong. I spelled club like club. Whoops, really helpful. All right, so I'm gonna re-go th through this. Um, yeah, this all kind of sounds good. Like it, I don't mention like, and it still seems really related to the job requirements. So I don't, don't need to change much. So here I'm like not really taking too much time, I'm, but I am just being really, really cautious that everything is um, related to the jo job, new job I'm applying for. All right, yeah, everything still looks good, but uh-oh, I have Planet Fitness team, so I'm gonna change that out. And team didn't have to be. And then I'm gonna now I just did it. I am going to again, it's so important to make sure you re read this. I don't have time, but so you guys know I just like time myself while I was doing this. And this only took me five minutes to make basically a apply for, make a cover letter that was similar but not the same and make it unique enough but still solid enough for the specific job. Now my original cover letter that I wrote probably took me about a half an hour um, and it may take you a little bit longer if you haven't written cover letters before but it's something but editing once you have the foundation editing takes much less time as long as you're just being cautious. Um, so it's honestly a really great way to um, learn um, how to edit a cover letter and make it easier for you. And again, this is why having a folder of your cover letters is so important. You could even have mini folders. So say if you were looking at, um, if I still, I was looking at personal trainer, but maybe I want to be a nutrition coach instead. So maybe I have all my covers that are about being a personal trainer in one folder and all my other ones about being a nutrition coach in another folder. So I know which ones, which um, type of cover letters, because being a nutrition coach that talks more about like dietary needs. And this is more about fitness. So maybe I want to actually have a different cover letter for that. 
but the work at the front is going to be a little bit more work. But once you do it, you're going to actually get more results and it will be a lot easier. All right. And another um, um, tip, and this is something like I absolutely did not know um, until I was like re looking for jobs is actually how you want to send a cover letter. The most professional way is actually save it as a PDF and send it that way. So what that means, a PDF, for those you don't know, is almost like sending a picture. If you send it as a Microsoft Word or a Google Docs, oftentimes people will either have access to a document that's running. They could even like edit it or the, even the um, formatting can get off depending on the software that person has. So maybe if you use Google Docs, but that person doesn't have Google Docs, they, and they try to open in Microsoft, all of a sudden the formatting is going to be off. So but if you take a picture, it's like taking a still of it. So the formatting will never be off. You'll never have to worry about someone accidentally um, like editing your cover letter. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So say I am um, done with this cover letter and I have um, Sarah Letter's email and that's actually how they want to get their cover letters. They want it directly sent to um, Miss Letter. I don't know if that's true, but we'll say that's true. So in order to save a, something as a PDF, you would do this. You go to the file again, and you want to download. So you go file and download, and I, this little arrow to the left, and more dropdown menus are going to um, be added. So we have Microsoft Word, and again, I wanna look for PDF. So actually, if I press PDF, I'm working in Chrome. If you're not working in Chrome, I do recommend that you do work in Chrome because I find it a lot easier when you're using Google applications, but that's, that's a, uh, um, a conversation for another time. But it will often go over here or it would have download straight to your um, computer. So what I can do then is that when I'm adding an email, I'm typing out an email, maybe you, you write out a quick email, you can actually attach that PDF. You wouldn't attach this, you would actually attach that PDF that you just saved. All right. And finally, I wanted to give you guys a little bit more guidance, again, because I know everyone is coming from a different, like, um, experience levels. So maybe maybe you have like a lot of technology skills and that's great. Um, maybe the, using Google Docs is newer. And maybe you really have never written a cover letter and this is brand new. So I kind of wanted to help you. So here, and you'll, you guys will um, be able to get this, is a cover letter example with comments. So it's actually that, um, that fitness, plant fitness. But I added all of these comments to give you some um, uh, guidance and like reminders so you don't have to necessarily like listen to my go back and listen to my voice through you can also just go ahead and um, read what the comments I wrote so as you're typing your resume so I have a reminder at Times New Roman um, these comments have more guidance and then you also so here it tells you how many times to enter that's really that will give you nice spacing um, enter is actually a really important way to space out in nicely um, format. And then actually toward the end here, I actually have examples and I'm pointing out times where I used all um, the tips I just had. So the word facilitated, that's an example of a strong verb. Here I have more examples, of, that's an example, a small private gym class is a 10 to 14 clients, that's a hard skill. The word furthermore is a transition word. Here I say due to my commitment to excellence and approach in personal training with understanding and individual skills care. That's a soft skill, but I didn't just say um, commitment to excellence. I gave a specific example, and I actually remind you to do that. And best, you can also use sincerely. I think my mistake cover letter used something weird like yours truly. Definitely stay away from yours truly, love always, um, best is always saved, um, you say best wishes, um, but just nothing kind of like of the ordinary.
but yes, feel free to use this. This will be for your own purposes. You'll have this. And then the second thing I have is a basic outline. So say if a lot of the things that I was saying feel very, very like, um, like overwhelming to you. And I totally get that. Um, especially if you've never ran a cover letter before, and maybe your computer skills, if also if your computer skills, you haven't had the time to explore Google Docs. Um, my advice is I have this outline and it, you can actually, um, if you wanna print it out, you could also type right on here, but you could also just print it out. And that's what I would do and write out um, some, um, what you want to do and then type it. And then you can also have, maybe if you have a friend or a family member who can kind of help you with the typing process. Uh, so here it kind of like takes it to um, a little bit slower. It is gonna be a little bit shorter, but it's definitely a good start. So here I have like position name, company name. Um, I talk about hard skill and soft skill. And of course this PowerPoint is always, so if you forget what a hard skill and soft skill is, feel free to look at this PowerPoint to um, just as a way. And again, feel free to take my words. I'm giving you permission. Feel free to say, thank you for your time and consideration. I look forward to hearing from you, learning more about this position. You can take that. Um, it's almost like Mad Libs, but professional Mad Libs, um, I guess. But um, definitely, um, if you are just feeling overwhelmed, I, this is definitely a good start. And then as you feel more comfortable, you can add more things in, but um, it's a way for you to kind of get your feet wet with it. All right. Um, so we are just almost out of time. We did pretty good with time. Um, so if you don't have any questions, you can sign off. Um, or if you want to stay for questions, I will be here for up to an hour. Um, also, um, just as feel free to visit Techos Home. I know they have updates about their programming and COVID-19 um, and learn a little bit more about what they're doing. And also another pro plug for Project Place. Um, Again, I'm a director of education there. We are currently working completely remotely and we're having classes remotely right now. Um, and we are taking applications. So um, if you or someone you know is homeless um, or needs housing resources, um, they are in need of recovery resources um, or um, mental health resources, and they, or maybe someone you know has, um, or, or yourself is now unemployed due to COVID-19 or for other reasons, um, we are, like this um, cover letter, letter, we are doing classes much like similar to this. Um, so you can go to projectplace.org um, and e or you can email client services um, at projectplace.org and we'll send you in an application. Um, and we're accepting people now. Um, all right. Do I have any questions? Feel free, you can use the chat or you can now unmute yourself. And again, you feel free to um, log off if you don't have any questions. I'm happy to answer any. And that's, you can let me know if someone writes cover. Uh, ask Gloria? You. Hi, yeah. Hi, this is uh, Justin, can you hear me? Hi, Justin, yep. Oh, hi, so um, basically, so for, for just like you said, so mainly it's mainly the, um, mainly three paragraphs for the most part in the, in the uh, the cover letter is only uh, one page. And um, basically, it's just basically like, um, you know, you're just selling your hard and, hard and uh, soft skills for the most part and just trying to uh, uh, make sure, add transition synthesis, is that basically it? And Yeah, I love the word synthesis, um, oh, like a synthesis, yeah. You kind of want to take the most important um, and to highlight that based on what the job requirements. But yeah, I think you got kind of like the main points. One page, three paragraphs, um, and just pulling, making sure you're using like good writing habits when you're writing them. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? Feel free to type in the chat or you can just unmute yourself, that's fine. You did get a couple of thank yous. Oh, thank you guys. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Great, um, so I'm, I'm getting some other questions. So I'm gonna put, um, I'm gonna email you all um, just today after the webinar, once we get off, I'm gonna send you all an email with uh, Victoria's slides so that you have those um, and um, some also some other uh, resources that are related to cover letters in case you need them. 
Um, there will also be um, on our website. So we just made a new page for webinars. It's uh, www.techgoeshome.org back, backslash webinars. And I'll, that'll be in the email as well. As well. So you can um, watch this recording. So if you wanna go over it again, you can, and you can watch any of the other webinars or sign up for a future webinar. So I will send you all that information in an email. Okay, thank you. Okay, and Victoria, you. you're just getting a bunch of love here in the chat. Oh, so lots of thank nice. yous. Um, do you teach any other classes for Techos Home? People want more of you, apparently. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll be at the Indeed. I'm um, teaching the Indeed one, um, and how to teach Google Classroom. So <laughs> I'll, I'll be back. Um, but also, I do teach um, really regularly at Project Place. Um, they see my Zoom face a lot. Yeah. <laughs> We have a webinar scheduled every Wednesday. So um, Victoria is doing three of them. We also have other trainers doing other topics as well. So um, you can sign up for all of them if you like. Any more questions while we have Victoria here? Um, any other questions, you know, anything else you thought of while she was talking um, that you might wanna ask about cover letters? Oh, I have a question, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hi, this is uh, Justin again. Um, so basically I, I've, uh, uh, when I was in college, I, um, I did like a project when I was in, when I was in college, I did it on, um, uh, for marketing. Uh, so I used Google docs then, but I haven't really used it since. Mm -hmm. And I have a MacBook um, pro uh, laptop. So I don't know. I, I don't, since I, you know, I haven't used it, the, um, the Google docs in uh, like maybe like four or five years. So I was wondering, can you download it on a MacBook pro or is it for Microsoft? So, so um, actually, the cool part about Google Docs is that um, it's linked with Gmail, and it's okay. completely free. You don't have to download, so I'm actually working on a MacBook now, and so I can actually show you. Um, so, say if I was on my Gmail. Um, so, do you have a Google email? Oh, yeah, I do. Yep. Yep, I have All a Google right. email. So. Um, so on your Gmail dashboard, I always like to say I go to the waffle over in the upper right hand corner. Oh, this okay. waffle is called the Google Apps. That's the professional name of it, but we just call it the waffle. Um, so the waffle <laughs> is like where you find everything. Um, okay. And here you have, you can actually get to Google Docs a few different ways. Um, I go, usually go straight. I scroll down. You might have to scroll down and go straight to Docs. Oh, okay. So. And you can actually use, it's basically like Microsoft for free. Um, I know my, um, at work, like all our students use only Google Docs, um, just because it's a free way, we don't have to pay for them. And I know Tech's Home um, is really into using Google Apps and stuff. Um, so yeah, if you take yourself to this Docs, and it actually, it tracks in real time, so you don't have to download anything. Say if you were using your MacBook, but then you want to go to the library and you are um, want to continue working, as long as you have internet access, you can actually use, see what you did. So I press this blank, and I can say, hello. And say if I logged off from here, and then I went to the library, and I signed into my email, and I went back to Google Docs, it'll still be there. Um, and I don't have to download anything, I don't have to email anything to myself, and it's completely free. So, I actually, so it's really um, awesome. And there's also Google Sheets, um, which is like their version of Excel and slides, which is their version of PowerPoint. Um, so it's I yeah. basically like, it lives in a cloud. It's like the Google cloud. So you can do it on any machine. So if you're using Google uh, products and you're like computer breaks and you go get a new computer, you log into your email and all your stuff is still there. Mm -hmm. So it's, it doesn't matter. You can get it on your phone. You, there's a uh, Google app for, um, iPhone, Android phone, yeah. tab, you know, Samsung tablet, an iPad. So any device whatsoever, you can access all your documents from the Google okay. Cloud. Okay, thank you so much. That's a great question. No Are there any more questions? I don't want to, anybody? No? Okay. All right then. I see some smiling faces, but it doesn't seem like there's any more questions. So um thank you victoria so much that was a wonderful um really wonderful presentation as i said i'm going to be emailing everybody uh just after as soon as we're all off um with some resources victoria slides and um a survey that i would like everybody to fill out if they haven't done it yet um so if you have any questions you can just reply to that email okay.
Thank you so much for coming. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Thank you so Bye. much.